All right, so from World Machine now I have my slope mask right here. This was from our slope selection, and I have a couple different tiles. These were the ones we just made, the desert and the grass. And then I have some other snow tiles that I had made from um, Google as well. Kind of a darker rock snow and a just regular lighter snow. So we'll be able to swap these and see, uh, see what it looks like with different textures. So now I'm going to go in Unreal, and I had upgraded to the newer version, 4.92. And we'll do a new project that we'll choose first person and create the project. So when you make a new Unreal project, you'll probably have an Unreal Engine folder. And I have my Unreal projects as a separate folder. So each time you make a new project, the folder will be listed here. And you might want to move any content files over. So the files I had already set up, I have them over in a previous uh, folders content. So I'm going to copy that over to our new folder. So in Unreal, first we want to set up our terrain and import it from our height map. So we can go over to the terrain tab here and import from file. This is where we reference our actual height map. So you'll most likely need to redirect it to your projects folder. In content, I have mine in terrain maps folder and the R16 file height new. It'll give you a preview, kind of green preview of the terrain, but yours will be a lot higher fidelity when it imports. The thing we want to set up though is if you did a 2048, you notice the overall resolution is 2060, 2160 when you enter here. Uh, you actually want to drop these number of components down to 16 rather than 17. Not sure the exact reason, but it helps registration on our textures and everything. So you, then the overall resolution goes to 2033, 2033. So that's what we need to do for the setup, and then we can import. And we'll get our terrain. Now, to get rid of the grid pattern here, if we go over to our world outliner and scroll down, to light source. Under the transform here, you can change it to movable. Then it'll take away that grid line, kind of the shadows not being built. It just won't render it right now. So we have our terrain that comes through fine. Uh, we can increase our movements camera speed over here. If we want to zoom around more. And right now I'm just making sure the kind of proportions look similar to what I was expecting. And, and this, this does, it looks pretty good. So we go in the content folder, and we're going to use material functions. We're going to create two material functions. We'll do one for desert and, and grass right now to mimic what we set up. So we can right click, and under materials, we're going to do a material function. We'll call this F underscore desert or we'll do sand. And we'll do another one. Doing that underscore stands for function just helps organize it easier. So if it was just a straight regular material, we would call it M underscore. The reason we we're using functions is it makes it easy for us to paint just a solid material and go back and edit the material independently. That way you don't end up with some crazy network of nodes where the whole terrain is in one file. So we can work independently and plug in, plug in different functions and see the results. So we could swap snow or grass or sand out. So let's set up one of these. We'll do grass first. And if you select the texture, we can work in two windows here. We can select the texture and hold T and our, our window. And this gives us a texture sample. So when working with functions, it's important that we, it says texture sample there. And over in the, the right, let's type in make, because we're looking for the make material attributes. This lets us have access to these pins that we normally see in a regular material. And we want to plug the output into the output result. 
so that all the function gets zipped up and we can plug into other materials. Now we're going to keep this these functions really simple for the first part of this just to, to make sure it works. So we'll plug the output, the RGB output, right into base color. And then we'll search over here on our filter. Let's search for landscape. And we want landscape layer coordinates. This helps us decide how much this tiles on our landscape. And if you click the landscape coordinates under mapping scale, now zero actually tiles uh, very, very much. It'll be very noisy. So the larger the number, the less it's going to tile across the, the surface. So for these like 512 textures, I've experimented with 256 as a good mapping scale to start with. We'll tweak that later though. We'll, we'll also adjust our roughness and add normal maps and add other uh, micro detail that blends in later, but we'll start with just the macro satellite images. So we apply this material. So that's about as simple as the material is going to get. And we have our uh, grass function already done. Now we'll do the same thing. We'll bring up the sand. Now we need our master material. So we can right click. And when I create this, this will just be a regular material. We'll call it landscape master. And I double click this. And on this one, we actually don't want the, all these pins available. So down here, there's an option called, um, it's kind of hidden right now, so use material attributes. So we'll turn it on. Um, and that lets us plug in the other functions and use some special blend modes. So here we can type in function, material function call. This lets us just bring the materials that we, the functions that we've already made, and you just sample them right from here. So we should see the ones we've created. So F grass and F sand. So if we start typing in material, we'll see down here material layer blend standard. And we'll add, you can add more materials later, but this will basically let us recreate what we've already set up. So we plug these in one base and one top the blended material outputs to the, these material attributes. And then we need to do an alpha. So what we can use is what's called a height lerp for linear height, linear interpolate. So we're going to add one of these and plug the alpha into the alpha slot. And first we'll just do a simple, we'll add a texture sample here. And under our texture, we're going to sample for noise. There's a pre-made uh, just default noise, Perlin noise. Kind of gives us this cloudy texture. So we can plug that in. And this is basically going to um, blend in, blend the two textures together based on its frequency, how much it's tiled. So we would also want coordinates here, landscape layer coordinates that we can drag out. We'll try uh, 32 to start. Oh, there's one last thing. We need to sample the actual layer that um, we're going to paint with. If you type in sample, you get a sample node, a landscape layer sample. So these work with the landscape mode. And we want this plugged into transition phase. And we can name it here. This is just uh, so we can ID what, what layer we're working on. So we could call this grass. And we can apply this. That material, landscape master, is actually what we want to apply to our full landscape. You can do that by finding your landscape over in the world outliner. So we click it here, and you'll see a material assign area. And we want to assign our landscape master material that we just saved. Now it'll take a second to compile these shaders. OK, so now we're just seeing the base grass here. And if we go to our paint option, we will see 
or grass layer. This is from the sample we just added to the master material. And you need to create a layer info for these. And we want to do non-weight blended layer. And you just name it. Um, let's find grass layer info. Put this in terrain maps as well. So this is our grass layer info layer. And what this allows us to do, we can import from file our slope mask. And it's not, uh, this is the directory it's in. So it's not showing up. And that's because this, it wants to see a PNG. So I have my slope new here. And the other thing we wanna make sure we do, we exported out a 2048, but for it to line up with our terrain, remember we changed the component size. So the resolution ends up being 2033. So we can actually just slightly resize this so it registers, and then we'll save it out as a PNG. And there we go, we see our slope, so we can import that. And that's the mask. Looks like we actually need to invert that. So we actually want the grass coming in as the top material and the sand as the base. Save this. Okay, so now we have our two satellite images lining up registered correctly with our terrain. And it's using the, the paint layer system. So the cool thing about this is we can go to the paint tab and if you just left click, it's gonna paint the grass. If you hold shift and left click, it's going to erase. So you can, basically you start with the slope, but you're free to change it however you want. Um, another cool feature here. So this blend that we're looking at, that was the noise that we added in the master material. So you can change what that is. You might, you might tile it more. You might pick a texture that represents the texture you're blending a little better. I was using this for snow before and it worked pretty well for snow, but for grass, you might want to find something that actually looks like blades of grass crossing over. Um, another thing that's really cool is we can go under um, this option and change it to alpha and we can load an alpha here. So I have just a black and white kind of snow alpha that I was using, but we can use this as a brush. We can increase the brackets for a larger brush size, and then you can actually paint with this shape. So you can um, get some pretty cool looking designs. Now, our grass actual material and our sand material. Right now we just have the macro kind of far away read that is working. So in the next chapter, we're gonna work on those materials and actually make them really nice, nice normal maps and have them blend really really well with the far away material. Thank you.